book of life. I did it last Sunday and I'm doing it today. And I'll be finalizing next Sunday as I also do another work. But today allow me to teach you the truth that you must know. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you are capable of doing in the world of spirit. It doesn't matter the amount of miracles that you can perform. It doesn't matter the longer time you can take speaking in tongues. It doesn't matter the title you have in the house of God. It doesn't matter the church you worship into. It doesn't matter who is your spiritual leader. If your name is not written in the book of life, you shall go to hell. And I repeat, if your name is not written in the book of life, you shall automatically enter into hell. There's no choice and there's no shortcut to that. And so, your name must and should be written into the book of life. There are two people who shall enter into the kingdom of God. Those that their names were written in the book of life and those that their names were written in the book of remembrance. I want you to know that there are three books in the presence of God. There is the book of remembrance and there is the book of life and there is the book of judgment. Now, who are the people that their names shall be written in the book of life? And who are the people that their names shall be written into the book of remembrance? And who are the people that their names are in the book of judgment? The book of life is for everybody and everyone but not the book of remembrance get me the book of life is for everybody and is for everyone but not the book of remembrance these two books are standing in the presence of God they are both good books but not everyone shall be found in the book of remembrance the book of remembrance has got very few people but it's not difficult to be found in it. When you read the Bible in the book of John chapter 3, John chapter 3, if you do have your Bible, open the Bible. John chapter 3. John chapter 3. Are you there? The book of John, chapter 3. No, I don't need it here. In a jazz up there. The book of John, chapter 3. Verse 16. 316. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world, but the world through him might be saved. Verse 
For so God loved the world. He sent his only son. So that whoever. This is for anybody and everyone. So that whoever believes. So the only way. For only way. Only way. Your name can be written in the book of life. It is by believing the son of God. The only way your name can be written in the book of life, it is by believing the Son of God. That is step one, and we all did. But does that make it complete? If that makes it complete, then what I'm doing today, what I did yesterday, what I'm about to do, it is illegal. If that is the only way. For so God loved the world, he gave out only his son. He gave out his only son so that when you and the other person believes in him, should not perish but have everlasting life. Because he did not send Jesus to come and condemn the world. But he sent Jesus so that when we get an opportunity to accept him, we may get life. So is that all? Now go back to the book of Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. Chapter 16. Are you there? Verse, chapter 16 verse 15. And he said to them, Go into the whole world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. And the signs will follow those who believe. Praise the Lord. Amen. Have you read that part? Go into the whole world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who do not believe will be condemned. John chapter 3 verse 16. It begins with God telling us about Christ. And now Christ is talking about the system. He says, you believe number one. But that's not all. You get baptized, number two. But also, there is a part that we need to do. To preach. What are we preaching then? We are preaching Christ and life. That's why I am doing the prayer that I'm doing for you. It's part of the preaching. Praise the Lord. It is the part, it's the part of preaching. That you must believe and be baptized. And when the Bible is talking about baptism, we go back to the teachings of Jesus towards this man called Nicodemus. Jesus told him, you must be born again. And he said, how can I be born again? My mom is dead. I'm too old. I'm too aged. I'm too tall. I can't fit in my mother. How? And Jesus talks him. Why can't you understand these simple teachings? I mean, you must be baptized in water and baptize. Praise the Lord. That is baptism. And the baptism of spirit, it involves your name now being summoned in the presence of God and being written in the book of life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 10 verse 20. Luke chapter 10 verse 20. This is what the word of God says. Luke chapter 10 verse 20. Behold I give you authority to tremble on serpents and scorpions. And all over the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. 
Now, I want to see a picture here, and I want you to help me see the same picture. Jesus is telling Peter, Jesus is telling John, Jesus is telling all the disciples, including others who are there with him, he's telling them, I am giving you power. I am giving you power. From today you have power. Ami teko. Nime kupangufu. And from today, all the powers of the world of darkness shall be nothing before you. The powers of witches shall be nothing before you. The powers of Satan shall be nothing before you. You shall step on them and they shall do nothing over you by all means. But don't allow this to make you happy. Don't celebrate because these things are going to take a place. Don't celebrate because these things are going to happen through you. Don't celebrate because these things. And today, that is the problem that we have gotten in our system. That is where we are. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I am so powerful. Did you see? Come for your miracle. Come for your word. Why aren't we calling people to come so that their names are written in the book of life? Today, churches that miracles have been put in front, ministers of the gospel, that miracle is the order of their subject. Their churches are full. They are living good life because they are reaping well. But one thing I want to assure you, many of us, I being one of them, if we don't do the right thing, hell is waiting for us. Because Jesus, being the greater prophet, he prophesied this. He said, and there are those who will say, Lord, Lord, by your name we removed demons. By your name we healed the sick. By your name, and I will tell them, go off me. I do not know you. Even the work you are claiming was not mine, but it was for your father, the devil. Simply because of one thing. The names were not written in the book of life. The names were not written in the book of life. And I want to honor God with all my heart and soul this afternoon. Because he revealed to me a secret that the devil had taken away from us. That the names need to be written in the book of life. Hello? It doesn't matter who you are. As long as your name is written in the book of life, you have life. Because the Bible says, and all those whom their names were found, regardless of who they were, they were given internal life. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And Jesus told the disciples in the book of Luke chapter 10 verse 20, do not rejoice because demons are submitting. Do not rejoice because you can speak in tongues. Do not rejoice because of the greater things that you will do in my name. As long as you call my name, they will happen. But be sure that your name, be glad, be glad. But rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. And verse 22 says something very interesting. Verse 21. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heavens and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them to babies. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good into your sight. All these things have been delivered to me by my father. And no one knows who the son is except the father. And who the father is except the son. And the one to whom the son will reveal 
to him. Look at the words of Jesus. So which means what I'm teaching you today, it is a revelation that God has hidden the wise and the prudent, but he only revealed to the babies and to the son, and the son reveals to whoever he wants. So I don't need someone to preach to me that Jesus loves me. This is enough evidence that he loves me. Because last Sunday I told you all these years I've never known this until last Sunday. Why? Because I don't see to prepare a sermon. I search for the sermon from heaven. If I was searching for the sermon, God will not get space to talk to me because I am always full with my researches. But because I went to listen from him, he revealed to me. And so today I'll be taking you through your names being written in the book of life. And that's why it has been burning me because it was in the course of this week when I saw a vision. And the vision was that I was having a very big crusade and behind me there was a big banner. And the banner was written, come it was something to do with the name. It was something to do with come, see something, write your name in the book. Something to do with the name. Uh, it, it was not in English. It was in the other language, which was simply talking about people coming and their names being written in the book of life. And I was on the podium. And now I started understanding that this is what God wants me to go out there and do. As much as people shall be healed, People shall be restored. People shall be raised in our crusade. But the mission is to write everybody's name in the book of life. Hallelujah. So everyone has a right. And because that is the mission, I am going to write as many as I can. Because now I understand the new purpose. I understand the new mission. I understand what God wants me to go outside and do. That everyone who emlevi we nini nita kuandika. Kesi yako ni badai lakini jina lazimu fanini kuandikwe. Now I started understanding why Jesus said, come to me as you are. And now I understand why there were two thieves on the cross. Whatever they had done was not the issue. The issue was the moment they had with Christ. Whatever sins they had committed was not the issue before God. The issue was the moment they had with Christ. One, they all had a moment of conversation with Christ. One told Jesus, Jesus, I don't want to tell you what I've been. I don't want to tell you what I've done. I don't want to tell you even what I did for me to be where I am. But I want to tell you one thing. I was brought here because I'm a thief. And it's true, I know I'm a thief. But you have been brought here because you are a son of God. So Jesus, when you go wherever you will go, remember me. If it was you, what would you, what, what would you, what would you have told him? No <laughs> kuje you must change fast. True or false? If it would have been you, what would you have told him? So that you come, I remember you so that you come and still there. By the laws of Moses, he was disqualified. But Jesus told him, brethren, a minute after now, I shall be with you in paradise. A minute after now, I shall be with you in paradise. Let me tell you something. When you accepted Christ, all your sins were forgotten and they were removed. And God forgot about them. Those sins are still existing in your own mind, not in the presence of God. It is you who is still holding your sins, not God. Come on, someone turn to your neighbor, tell your neighbor, neighbor, from the time you confess that Jesus is Lord, all your sins were forgotten. They were forgiven 
It is only you who is still holding them in your mind. But not God. Not God. But even though your sins are forgotten, that does not qualify you for heaven. What qualifies you for heaven? It is your name now to be written. It is your name to be written. Someone open for me the book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 3. Philippians chapter 4 verse 3. Are you there? Philippians chapter 4 verse 3. Now listen to me. I employ Eudia and I employ Synthete to be of the same mind in the Lord. And I urge you also, true companion, help those women who labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. <laughs> that is Paul. Can someone read for me a different version? If you think your version is written differently, different in English, please stand on your feet and read it for us in Jesus' name. Okay. Thank you very much, the media people. This is what the media has given us. And I ask you also, do your fellow help these women for they have labored side by side with me in the gospel together with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. Today, we are laboring at a cost of insult, but we are not broken. Today, mama na mama na prophet kwa kazi ya mungu, ni woman friend wa prophet. Amen? Kwa ni mangapi mezumuzi wa juu ya miri ya mapa? Oh, nowadays there is a lady who has money, yenda mechukua prophet. So you always own a prophet because that woman has money. Ah! There was even another one who wrote on the Facebook. Sylvia, you are a witness. What did, she, what did that person say? That prophet left his family in Nairobi. They are suffering. He came to Kisum and married another lady in Tiengere. That's where he is living. That was on Facebook after that prophecy. I am not the first one. Neither are you the first one. Do the work that God called you for. Paul is saying, Paul is saying, brother, I urge you, take the yoke. And don't forget these women. Paul is not talking of a woman. He's talking of women. A woman is one. Women is more than one. And Paul is saying that these women, come on, take me back there. These women who and help these women who have con contented at my side in the course of the gospel. Come on, take me to the other one. The other one, the side by side. It was a very good one. This one says they have contented. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Are you? Are you? Are, uh, take me to the version that you just you just gave me before this one. It is this one, yeah. And I ask you, true York fellow, help these women, for they have labored side by side with me in the gospel together with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers, whose names are in the book of life. So how did Paul knew that their names were they were in the book of life because he wrote it. Oh, how did Paul knew? 
knew that these people, their names were in the book of life because Paul knew he wrote it. Why did he write it? Because they stood with Paul side by side. They stood with Paul side by side. Brethren, let's not cheat. Who would have donated eight plots? We build a church. These, are, these were six plots. In fact, there's one plot still missing. It's only that we have not started looking for it. We'll get it. Somebody to Tamisha to Mali Apa. It's just a matter of God's time. Come to Tamisha Apa. Because we have five title deeds. We have five. We, ha we have five plots and we have six title deeds. But I want to ask you, be honest to yourself. Would you have given? Would you? Plots. Where are you going? Where are you Brethren, kuna vitu atuzungumzi, lakini mbingu inajua. Tunaambianga mbingu atuambie watu wa dunia hii. Wengine wetu watatukufanya kazi kwa kanisa hapa. Tunafanya wiki mbili we have given up. Our all. Am I the only one? And we look at you and we say no problem. Because we are waiting for the last day. You will come to realize that even that job you were given was a favor to take you to heaven. It was a favor to take you to heaven. Let me tell you something. When I assign you any work in the house of God, you are not doing me a favor. I am the one doing you a favor. Because at the end of the day, there is no recommendation you write about me. But there is a recommendation I write about you. When I give you a duty and you walk off, you are walking off from your own advantage. Whatever the reason, that is your own. But you are walking on from an opportunity of grace. Because you are not a stone to live forever, but you are a soul to live forever. I may be weak in this physical world, but I'm not weak in the spiritual world. My voices command in heaven. I am not weak in the spiritual world. If I was weak, demons would not cry when they see me. Have they ever cried when they see you? Have you ever seen them crying when they see a D.O.? Have you ever seen demons crying when they see a P.C.? Have you ever seen demons crying when they see a police officer? But they cry when they see me, just the way they cried when they saw Jesus. I may be weak in this world, but I'm not weak in the next world where you will live forever. I may not be weak for me to allow you to use my name in some of the prayers. Even in your hard times, there are those who have used my name. Did you fail? Did you lose it? Am I a chief in your village that my name worked for you? If I'm not a chief in your village, then I'm a chief somewhere. Amen. Jesus told people, my kingdom is not of this world, but my kingdom is of a world that you will go there for eternity. And people looked at him and they told him, you son of Mary, beggar, carpenter, what are you talking to us? Do you know who we are? And Jesus told them, on earth I know who you are but where I'm talking about you are nothing for I am praise the Lord Jesus the Bible says and Paul was instructing his people the Philippians and he told them brother there are some women there who labored with me hand to hand side to side together with Clement and other co-workers whose names are written in the book of life. Paul is talking of some people that their names are written in the book of life. How did he knew that their names were written in the book of life? Because he wrote them. He wrote them. He wrote them. And the same Bible go, you will find also some people that Paul handed over to Satan. How many people have ever read that chapter? There were other people also where Paul says, and so and so, I hand them over to Satan. So look at this. 
Paul had power to hand people's names in the book of life to heaven, and he also handed some to Satan because of what they had done to him. So, brethren, these people, their names were written in the book of life because they supported Paul in preaching the gospel. And let me show you something. <laughs> let me show you something. From the time the earth was created, Miriam is number 251 to own this plant. So she's not the first owner. VPM is number 252. So tell me how Miriam can stand and say this earth is, this land is hers. It's not hers. There was the first one who owned. When his time expired, another one took over. Another one took over, 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 until she became number 251 to become the owner. Miriam, when you bought here, did you do a transfer of a title deed? Yes? So why did you do a transfer of a title deed if it was yours? It was the transfer that granted her to be the owner. Tell your neighbor, whatever you are holding on is not yours. That thing you are holding on more than God is not yours. It is yours as long as the breath is still inside you. When the breath goes off, it will become of somebody. Yes, your son may inherit, but your son may die and his wife inherit. And when the wife remains, the wife will marry another man and they will change according to the love in between them. And when, you are, when you, the wife of your son dies, the man who took her over owns those things. And he will also marry another woman. And when the man dies, the woman remains with them. And so everything on earth is for a man for a shorter time. If you want to make anything yours permanently, serve God with it. If you want to make anything yours permanently, serve Jehovah God with it. When you serve God with it, it shall remain yours forever. But as long as you don't serve God with it, it is yours for a shorter time. I know Miriam is shocked. I've never told her that. But we search things. We search things. Even us today, some of the people we love so dearly with our hearts, many years ago we didn't know them. But it didn't, didn't mean that we didn't love somebody. There was somebody by them also. Life is a pattern that changes. Life is a pattern that changes. Only God does not change. And when you serve him, be rest assured of security. Whatever you serve him with shall remain. And that's why Jesus said, anybody who shall leave his land, anyone who shall leave his children, for my sake and my gospel, shall not lose it but shall regain it, shall get it back a hundred folds, a hundred times. So brethren, now I've confirmed to you that the book of life, it is men of God who write the names of people. I've confirmed to you. By the word of God. And I've told you, the book of life is open for anybody and everyone, but not the book of remembrance. Hallelujah. The book of remembrance is different now. Let me tell you. Can someone lastly go into the book of, uh, let me finish the book of life with the book of Revelation. It will be unfair if I don't read this book because it's one of the key books. Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20 from verse 1. The Bible said, Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand he laid hold of the dragon and that serpent of old who is the devil and Satan and bound him for a thousand years and he cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal on him so that he should deceive 
deceive the nation no more till the thousand years were finished. But after these things, he must be released for a little while. And I saw thrones, and they, I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment were committed to them. Then I saw the soul of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received his mark on their forehead or on their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. But the rest of the dead did not live again until thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Now, then the thousand years have expired. And when the thousand years had expired, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nation which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, and together, and all that. And when you read all that, it tells you the benefit of your name to be written in the book of life. It tells you the benefit of your name to be written in the book of life. And so you must work hard your name to be written in the book of life. And you must work hard to serve the Lord. So that you may reign with Christ a thousand years. Praise our Lord Jesus. But if I'm to talk about the book of remembrance. The book of remembrance. It begins. Let me read just a short verse of it. And then I will continue next Sunday. The book of Mark, Malak, Malak, the book of Malak, the book of Malak, are you there? The book of Malak chapter 3. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the book of Malak chapter 3 verse 16 I started with the book of John chapter 3 verse 16 when I started with the book of life and now I'm talking about the book of remembrance I'm also starting with the book of Malak chapter 3 verse 16 never forget those two chapters Malak chapter 3 verse 16 Luke chapter 3 verse 16. They are all chapter 3. And they all begin from verse 16. Talking on two different types of books. Malak chapter 3 verse 16. And then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another. And the Lord listened and heard them. So a book of remembrance was written before him. And for those who fear the Lord and who meditate on his name. They shall be mine says the Lord of hosts. On the day that I make them my jewel, and I will spare them, as a man spares his own son, who serves him, then you shall again discern between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves God and one who does not serve him. So the book of remembrance is about who? It's not about who believes. It's not about who is baptized. It is about the one who serves. Mm -hmm. Talk to your neighbor. Tell your neighbor. Neighbor, you can be written in the book of life. But not in the book of remembrance. But no one can be found in the book of remembrance. If he's not first in the book of life. For you to enter the book of remembrance, Malim Jane, you must first be in the book of life. Why? <laughs> because the book of life will make you reign, live again. The Bible has said that in the book of Revelation. But the book of remembrance will make you shine like a jewel in the presence of God. And God will spare you as he spares the son who serves and last verse, last verse, last verse in the same chapter, last verse, it's verse Angoa, last verse, the last sentence in verse 18 says, And you shall again discern between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves God and one who does not serve God. 
So you might enter in heaven because your name was written in the book of life. But that does not mean kuna enjoyment utapata kama hukusav. Because the Bible says, and you shall know the difference. Today when you serve God, people will ask you, what are you laboring for? Must you? How foolish are you? Prophet, I'm brainwash. I know some of you here, Munambiwa, ni mwa brainwash. Sinikweli? When they tell you, tell them, let him brainwash me with the word of God than you brainwashing me with your words. If you want to brainwash me, come with the Bible. I will accept you to brainwash me. Some people are saying, oh, prophet, we are brainwashed. Oh, it's in Uyo. Oh, with that prophet from Nigeria. Do that. Ah, ah. Tell them, he brainwashes us with the word of God. Reading his Bible, confirming myself in my own Bible. He's reading from his own Bible. I am confirming it from my own Bible. Those who shall be written in the book of remembrance, they are those who served the Lord. But those who shall be written in the book of life, they are those who believed in Christ. So you can believe, but not go far. You only remain there. But you believe you shall be saved, shall not be condemned. But there are those who believed and they became servants. Now they are written in the book of remembrance. They are written in the book of remembrance. Those who serve the Lord. So don't faint. Don't get tired. Don't lose hope. Don't lose confidence. Serve your God. Serve your God. Let them say what they want to say. Let them call you what they want to call you. Let them talk what they want to talk. But days shall come when they will realize that whatever you are doing was the right thing. Hmm. Holy Spirit. The Bible says this. One time Jesus appeared in the city, in the town of Bethel. And Jesus was there teaching, teaching the word of God. He was there teaching. Can I get some two people? Please come, come, come. You and another one, another one guy. I need, I need one, another one person. Yes, come quickly. And as you come, come with a seat. And I want to thank God because the two, these two guys, God, the Holy Spirit has brought the right people. These two guys, they are gifted in the catering area. So the my demonstration is going straight with what they are. Very good cooks in Jesus' name. And now one day Jesus came into the city of Bethel. And there was Martha and Mary, sisters. And as Jesus started talking, um, he started yawning. And one realized that Jesus was angry. And she decided to go and start preparing a meal. Can you go and start preparing a meal? But the other one, even though Jesus was angry, and as long as he was talking, she decided to sit with Jesus. When the other one was preparing a meal, as long as Jesus was speaking, she knew that Jesus was angry. Uh, but as long as Jesus was talking, she decided to sit. So the, when the other one was cooking, realized he was, uh, she was alone. So she came to complain. Come, can you come and complain? You are working alone. And she came to complain. Teacher, why is my sister seated down here? And he can see, she can see you are hungry. And she has left the work for me alone. If you are Jesus, what will you do? You will tell the other lady, come on. Can you wake up and go and cook? That's not what Jesus said. Jesus said, leave her alone. For what she has chosen, it's the right thing. It's all about choices. Mm -mm. It's all about choices. Am I talking to somebody in the house of God? It's all about choices. Is there anyone listening to me? It's all about choices. How you are serving your God is a choice. What you are doing today is a choice. It is not the devil. It is a choice. But the choices are two. There is either a good choice or a bad choice. They are all choices. If 
Jesus would have looked at his stomach, he would have said, mm -hmm. why are you seated here and leaving your sister to walk alone? Because she was preparing some nice soup. But Jesus said, my words are life. When you are busy cooking there and you cannot hear, you will feed me my stomach, but you will still go to hell. But it's rather I remain hungry, but she takes the words of life because she shall inherit. How you serve God is a choice. There are no conditions. There is nothing binding you not to serve. It's a choice. But some choices are good and other choices are not good. May God help us to make good choices. Praise our Lord Jesus Christ. And may God help us to have good choices. The book of remembrance is written the names of those who serve the Lord. And how do you serve the Lord? You serve the Lord by the opportunities that you normally see me give you here. Those are opportunities of services, if you didn't know. Because can I take a speaker kwa sufuria niende ni chemshe ni kunywe? Ah, I'm asking you. Can I take sufuria into a neza chukua sufuria ni yake speaker ni chemshe supu ni kunywe? Ni seme leo ni mekunywa asubu ni mekunywa supu ya magnet sasaba na ngojia supu, supu ya coil. Can I? No. These are opportunities of services that I always give you. These are opportunities of services that I give all of you. So that by so doing, your names are written in the book of life. And brother and sister, you can partake of all this. Sometimes God will bring things that are too big for you to do. But you can become vigorous in the spirit. You can become vigilant in the spirit. You look for a brother and a sister and one, no, there is this going on. Me, I can get 500. Oh, toy 500. Oh, toy 500. Tukiwa watu watano, watu sita. Kila mtu akitua 500. Situ neza ya kwa ibaraka pia sisi. Devil will tell you, no, you can't. But the Holy Spirit tells you, you can. Because it's about you. That's why the Bible says in the book of Isaiah, arise and shine. Use your head. Never let opportunities pass you. Always think smarter. Look for a brother, sister. I want to partake of it. We go as a team. Never, never allow the devil to tell you you can't make it. You can. You must use your head. Don't be the man who was given one talent but still went ahead and dug a hole. The same way he had energy to dig a hole, he had the same energy to go and do something with it. How comes he had no energy to do something with it, but he had energy to dig a hole? And he didn't dig it anywhere where it would be stolen. He made sure wherever he dug, it was private. Only him who knew. And waiting patiently, waiting patiently for the master to come back so that he can return that one. Don't be such a person in the kingdom of God. Because sometimes you need to see, to show God how vigorous you are in the spirit for him to be challenged, for him to open your door. Some people just want to sit there. So at Munga Oni Kutoka Mbinguni, you did nothing. Who told you God blesses people who are doing nothing? Do something even if it is small. Because that small thing can provoke him to open a bigger door. God says those who are faithful on little matters can be faithful on big matters. If you are not faithful on little matters, how shall you be faithful on big matters? If you are not faithful on little matters, how can you be faithful on big matters? If you can't fight small wars, even the big wars, God knows you are a coward. You don't deserve. Fight for the blessings in whichever angle you can. When God sees you mobilizing five, seven, ten people, twenty people, and you come as a team, next time God will say, now my daughter, now my son, you are not sharing this one. You are standing alone because I've opened the door. Never see to do nothing when you see an opportunity in the kingdom of God. 
you can. From the time of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffers violence. And the violent people shall take it by force. Hallelujah. And the book of judgment, we know it's opposite of John chapter 3 verse 16. And whoever refused, John chapter 3 verse 16. Mark chapter 16 verse 15. And whoever refused is already condemned. So, if your name is not in the book of life, don't ask where it is. Because it must be somewhere. If you know I didn't pray for you last Sunday, and you are here today, and you want your name to be written in the book of life,